Does height matter when trying to win a World Strongest Man title? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Ciao, Welcome to My Block Strongest Man, where we bring attention to the world of strongman and show you how you can mimic those activities using everyday objects all around your own property. If you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing and remember to hit that bell button for all notifications so you'll know whenever I provide all the valuable content every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So without further ado, on to today's topic. So there have been a lot of great videos on YouTube talking about height and strongman. Big Laws Official has done some great ones. Ones, talking about whether shorter people can become elite level strongmen and who the tallest strongmen winners of all time were. But what we haven't seen yet and what I'd like to do today is go through the heights of every winner in World Strongest Man history and see if we can come up with a pattern of whether there's a sweet spot in height and what the trend has been over the years and where we expect it to go. So if we start off at the inaugural World's Strongest Man in 1977 that happened in Universal Studios, California, Bruce Wilhelm at 6'2 won that inaugural event. And then in 78 and 79, they occurred again in Universal Studios, California, I believe the only location to host it three times. Bruce Wilhelm wins again in 1978, and Don Reidhout in 1979 at 6'3". Then we see the emergence of Bill Kazmaier as a winner in World's Strongest Man. He wins in Vernon, New Jersey in 1980, and then in Magic Mountain in 81 and 82, and Bill Kazmaier is 6'2", so so far we're seeing a real steady type of height for World's Strongest Man winners. But then we have Jeff Capes win in New Zealand in 1983, and he's 6'6", so he breaks the mold and comes in as a very tall winner, breaking the mold that we had seen up to that point so far. 1984 happened in Mora, Sweden, and John Paul Sigmaris in The Legend at 6'3 wins his first World's Strongest Man. And then in 85, Jeff Capes again at 6'6 repeats in Portugal. John Sigmarsson wins two more World's Strongest Men, one in Nice, France in 1986. Of course, 1987, World's Strongest Man did not happen. And then in 1988, Sigmarsson wins again in Budapest, Hungary. And again, he's 6'3". Jamie Reeves wins in San Sebastián, Spain in 1989, and he's also 6'3". And then Sigmarsson repeats for his fourth World's Strongest Man title in Finland in 1990 at 6'3". 1991 in Tenerife, Canary Islands, we see Magnus Ver Magnuson emerge, and he's also 6'3", and he, of course, has the famous story of coming in as a world's strongest man equipment tester, gets called into Campina, then wins the whole competition. So, so far, lots of 6'3s and a few 6'2s, with uh, Jeff Capes kind of breaking the mold. And then in 1992, Ted Vanderpar really breaks the mold. Tallest world, strongest man winner of all time at seven feet tall. And so um, then we move on to 1993, where we see Gary Taylor win one of the shortest winners, and he is six feet tall. And then in 1994, Sun City, South Africa is the... Um, Beginning of Magnus Ver Magnuson's real dominance, where he wins again. Again, he's 6'3. He wins again in the Bahamas the following year, and he wins again in Mauritius the following year to round off his four World's Strongest Man wins. Yoko Ahola, one of my favorites because he was smaller than a lot of the other guys, but a great competitor, gets his first win at Valley Resort, Nevada, Prim Valley Resort, Nevada, 1997. And then Magnus Samuelson, another one of my favorites because of the arm wrestling background and the famous arm wrestling World Strongest Man match with Nathan Jones. Uh, he wins in 1998 in Morocco, and he is 6'6". Uh, so I forgot to mention Yoko Hola, only 6'1", much like Alexei Novikov, who won this year. Yoko Hola wins again in 1999 in Malta. Again, he's 6'1". Then we have Yanni Virtanen, another really tall competitor who for some reason I remember at uh, as being very good at the Fingal's Fingers. He's 6'5", and he wins in Sun City, South Africa the second time it happens in that location, and that was in 2000. Then we have Sven Carlsen win in 2001 in Zambia, and he is 6'2". Then we begin the dominant reign of Marius Puchanowski. He was 6'1". Uh, maybe looked taller because he was so wide and huge, but 6'1", and he wins in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia in 2002. 
He then wins again in Victoria Falls, Zambia in 2003. And then Vasil Virastuk, one of uh, Big Laws' favorites, wins in Nassau, Bahamas in 2004. He is 6'3". We then have Puchanowski get his third of five World's Strongest Man wins in Chengdu, China, 2005. Again, he's 6'1". And then another very tall competitor, Phil Pfister, who I remember watching for a couple of years, uh, just missed the podium or missed the win, and, and how determined he was that he, he guaranteed he would win this one day. And he did in 2006 in Sanya, China. He was 6'6", really a very big guy. Marius wins again in 2007, Anaheim, California, and again he was 6-1. And then his fifth win comes in Charleston, West Virginia, uh, 2008, and again Marius at 6-1. Then we have the beginning of the reign of Zadrunas Zaviskas as a World uh, Strongest Man winner. He had four altogether, the first one happening in Malta in 2009. He's 6-3. He wins again in Sun City, South Africa in 2010. And then Brian Shaw gets his first win, Big Brian Shaw, 2011, and he is, as we all know, six foot eight, a real giant of the sport. Big Z wins again in 2012 in LA, and he is 6'3. Brian Shaw with his second win at 6'8 in Sanya, China in 2013. Big Z again, and this is kind of the the, the big time rivalry where they go back and forth for many, many years. Um, probably the greatest rivalry in all of world's strongest man history so big z wins again in la in 2014 and he is 6-3 brian shaw then wins in 2015 and 2016 in putrajaya malaysia and then kasane Botswana, and again he's 6-8 then we have eddie hall win the very famous 2017 world's strongest man very famous because of the controversy with thor over the viking press and eddie hall is 6-3. I think he said he's like 6-2 and 3 quarters or something like that. So, round it up to 6-3. And then Half Thor, Julius Bjornsson, better known as Thor, wins in Manila, Philippines in 2018. His only World's Strongest Man win, although he had, we'll, we'll uh, go through all of this in another video, lots of, you know, second and third place placings both year, and he did very well in the Arnolds as well. So, uh, even though only one World's Strongest Man victory, Lots to be proud of in a variety of other areas. And he's famously 6'9", so uh, even taller than Brian Shaw. Martins Lisi's wins in 2019, and he is 6'2". And, of course, the 2020 World's Strongest Man that just happened crowned Alexei Novikov the winner at 6'1". And so, now we... Now that we've gone through every year and who won at what height in every year, we want to discuss, well, what's kind of the average? And so I did our arithmetic mean, median, and mode functions. So mean is your average. The average height of all World's Strongest Men winners from 1977 to 2000 is six foot four. In case you were wondering, it is six foot four. Uh, median meaning if you took all of these values and arranged them in order, the value in the middle would be six foot three. And then mode would be the value that occurs most often. So the average is six foot four, but the most common height is six foot three. And then, uh, of course, Pujanowski has more wins than anybody else. Universal Studios had three appearances, but I got to work on my formula here because I think some of the other locations also had three, so we'll, uh, we'll work on that. And then, of course, if we want to look at the heights again and see, does height not only allow you to win, but allow you to win multiple times? So the average height, again, was 6'4", Wilhelm won two at six foot two and let's just look at the multiple winners bill kazmaier won three at six foot two uh sigmerson won four at six foot three uh who else do we have magnus ver magnuson won four at six foot three and if we keep going down pujanowski won five at six foot one so i would say pujanowski um so far is the only one to really deviate substantially from the average and be incredibly successful. Um, of course, we'll see Brian Shaw break that mold in the other way. Zaviskis won four of them at 6'3". Again, the average is 6'4". He's right there. Um, and then we have Brian Shaw winning four. And then uh, Half Thor only won one. So I would say, for the most part, you can see that all of these winners who won multiple World Strongest Men are kind of around the average with Brian Shaw and Marius Pujanowski, who I remember being well-known as Super Marius, like Super Mario, um, breaking the mold 
from the lower end and from the higher end. Now, now that we know that information, let's talk about what the uh, what the trends have been. So let's zoom this in a bit. And so this has been the, the trend over the years. So if we look at the winter heights over the years, here's all the names I just mentioned, starting from 1977 all the way to Alexei Novikov this year on the right. And you can kind of see the trend. So you had, you know, in the beginning years, a little bit of fluctuation, not much. Ted Vanderpar, of course, throws the chart way off uh, up. And then you have kind of uh, in this area between Magnus Ver Magnuson and I would say Zadrunas here, you have a lowering, like kind of going lower than it was before. Um, your y-axis here is inches, so kind of the 78 is uh, six foot four. So here for a while, you see many years of people kind of lower than that. Yoko Ohola's in there at six one and so forth. And then uh, starting off right in this area, you kind of get up tall again. And this is Brian Shaw here, for example, and that's because you have Brian winning a, you know, multitude of championships in here, and that's why you see that. So, if you look at our little trend line, it is increasing little by little over time. We said our average was six foot four, and so what I did was I let the trend line go out ten more years. So the end of these dots is ten years from now, 2030, and so the idea would be. In 2030, what do we expect the average height to be? And so the average height would be about 77 inches 10 years from now, which would be 6.5. So it'll go up by an inch based on the uh, quasi-predictive analytics I've done here. Hopefully you found this helpful and informative. Um, going forward in the future, we're going to break down everything. We'll do weights of all the world's strongest men. In history, we'll do BMI. So I've put together this strongman encyclopedia, my block strongest encyclopedia, where we can go through all this great information and take a look at all of that and see how it all contributes, not only to the winners, but we'll also look at second place finishers and third place finishers. And we'll do the same thing for the Arnolds as well. So stay tuned for a whole great encyclopedia of knowledge. I want to produce a long series of videos so that anytime you want to know anything about how people perform in World's Strongest Man and what all the parameters are that led to that performance, you can come to one place, My Block Strongest Man. I'll catch you next time. So if you like this video and want to learn more about any of the products I described during this video, make sure to check out the links in the description below. So if you like this video and haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing using that button right there. And also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there. This one is the one that YouTube thinks that you will like the best. And this one is the one that I think you will like the best. As always, share this with everyone. And until next time, ciao, homie.